I know shipping on eBay can be extremely intimidating and that's why today I'm going to simplify it for you and help make your life a little easier. What's up guys, welcome back into the Millennial Profit. My name's Adam and I'm a full-time reseller. If you're new here, I show you all different kinds of ways to make money. So if you like money, hit that subscribe button. I've made this video already once, like eight months ago, but I really wanted to say a couple more things than I did in that video. And rates and stuff has changed, so I really wanted to make an updated one of these. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to ship on eBay, how to use these flat rate boxes, when to ship normal priority, UPS, FedEx, Everything you need to know about shipping on eBay, I'm going to talk about it in this video. So first you're gonna need supplies. I've already made a video on that and I explain all the supplies that you will need from scales to tape to bags, boxes, every everything that you will need, I explain in that video and I give links of where to get it all as well. Now the one thing that I think really confuses people about shipping on eBay is there's no like standard thing to do like every time you sell an item, like on Poshmark or Mercari if you use their shipping, you just sell it and they send you a label and it's pretty easy, that's all you have to do. On eBay, shipping is like a game. Each individual item is going to cost a little bit different to ship and all the services aren't going to be the same every time. So you kind of just have to play around with the weight and dimensions every time you sell something and then choose the best option for that item. So first, let's get these boxes out of the way right now. And let's talk about my favorite shipping service, First Class. I use this on most of my stuff. As a lot of you that have watched some of my videos know or anyone that hasn't, I sell a lot of stuff under a pound. I sell a lot of hats and shirts and things like that and all of that is under a pound and all of that can go first class so what do we send our first class packages in literally anything you can use poly mailers you can use padded mailers you can use boxes as I'm going to tell you a hundred times in this video save all the boxes mailers padded mailers that you get in the mail and just reuse them that's what I do I never have to buy any boxes I reuse all of these boxes from when I get in the mail from Amazon what I get in the mail from Target. I got these Fila slides at Marshall's and I sold the slides and sent them in a poly mailer so it would be under first class and then I reused the box to ship something else. I have boxes all over the place down here, honestly too many, but if you break them down, it's really not that big a deal and you can store a lot of them. Now, one thing you don't wanna send first class in is any priority brand and stuff. I'll get into more of this later, but obviously this has to be set priority and these are the special flat rates and then there's other ones as well. Again, I will get into all of that a little later. Just wanted to put that out so people aren't sending first class stuff and priority stuff. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So for first class, dimensions don't really matter if we're being completely honest. I don't even mess with the dimensions because again, I'm just using a small box or these for anything that's under a pound. And it'll save you some time if you don't mess with the dimensions. If you're under a pound, it doesn't really matter. Just use the weight. Now the weight has certain levels. You've got four ounce, eight ounce, 12 ounce, and 15.9 ounce. You can also put 16 ounce on eBay. And on these levels, that's where the price goes up. So if something's three ounces, it's gonna cost the same as four ounces. If something's six ounces, it's going to cost the same as eight ounces. So those are the thresholds, four, eight, 12, 16. So if you have something that's like 12.1 ounces and you can do anything to get it under that 12 mark, you're gonna save some money because that's where it goes up. And sometimes it goes up even like a buck. So I'm going to give rates in this video of all these different services, but they are changing over time. Since my last video, like eight months ago on this, a lot of these rates are even up like one whole dollar, but that just happens, inflation, and eBay's always just raising their rates a couple times a year. So the first class rates currently are between $3.37 and $6.28. Obviously the 337 is for four ounces and that would be in places closest to you. First class, like some other services, it goes based off of location. So obviously if I'm in Ohio, and I'm sending something to the Midwest, it's going to be cheaper than if I'm sending something to California. So what's an item we would send first class? This hat. This is an unstructured hat, so I would send it in a poly mailer and it's going to be under four ounces. So it's going to be pretty cheap to ship and it's Chicago. So it's going to go in like my region, my little area. So it's probably gonna cost between 337 and 350 to ship. It'll be nice and easy. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I will show you how to ship a couple items using the eBay template and everything. Next, I'm briefly going to touch on media mail. I'll put up on the screen now everything that qualifies as media mail, CDs, books, vinyls, anything like that. If you have an item that's listed in one of these categories and you go to ship it, media mail will be an option on your screen. It's not an option for that label on every single item, obviously, because they don't want people taking advantage of that. And the weight thresholds on media mail are by pound as well. So one, two, three, four, five pounds. I'll put that up as well. The different rates per pounds, the scale that media mail goes by. And how would you ship a book like this? Just throw it in like a padded mailer. Next, this is probably the most slept on service of all time right now, Parcel Select. When I made my video eight months ago, 
it was not a big time factor because Priority Mail was cheaper, but Priority Mail raised their rates and Parcel Select, I'm pretty sure just stayed the same. I've been sending probably 80% of my packages that are over a pound Parcel Select because it's just been cheaper. So I feel like a lot of people don't even see Parcel Select because it's kind of hidden all the way at the bottom. You can see like Priority all the way at the top and they try to push that rate on you. But then if you click like show more options and you scroll all the way to the bottom, usually parcel select is going to be like 20 cents to $2 cheaper than priority. Not always, again, it depends where it's going, but I've found very much so recently since the recent priority price hike that parcel select has been cheaper. Now this isn't going to get to the buyer as fast, but if you did free shipping or you had buyer pays for shipping and you did parcel select or UPS ground or something like that, you can send it whatever you darn well please. All right, so back to parcel select. Weight and dimensions matter for parcel select, so make sure that you have those accurately. I found that parcel seems to be best for like one to five pound items. It may be better for those items over five pounds, but usually UPS and FedEx and some of the flat rate boxes are going to be where your better rates are for that. Again, you just kind of have to play with every single item that you sell and decide what the cheapest and best option for you is as it is different every different place that it goes. So Parcel Select has a very wide range of pricing. Anywhere from like seven to $12 is usually when I'm using it. If it's over that, like one of those other options I just mentioned is going to be cheaper. As for packaging for first class, Parcel Select and Media Mail, you can pretty much send it in whatever you darn well please. Like I said earlier, you can send in a poly mailer, a bubble mailer, any like scrap boxes that you have around. But again, do not send any of this stuff in priority boxes that is a no-no and they will upcharge you to your account but priority i think is where a lot of people get very confused so that's what i'm going to touch on and probably spend the most time on in this video it can be very confusing and i can honestly see why people are confused because there's so many options to choose from so with priority you have your flat rates you have standard priority all different things to choose from and I'm going to dive into each and every one one by one and explain what it's best for and the price of it. First, I'm going to touch on all the flat rates. They're pretty self-explanatory. Anything under 70 pounds, if it fits, it ships in all these bad boys. I'm gonna say that a lot. Literally, I don't know what you would have to put into this to be over 70 pounds or like any of these, like you could probably fill them with like rocks or something really heavy like that. Anyways though, anything under 70 pounds and it's good to go in these. Dimensions in any of these don't matter, obviously, USPS already knows what the dimensions are when you select these. So really the weight is the only thing that matters on all of these flat rates. I personally don't use many of these flat rates much. On heavier items that most people would use these on, usually it's cheaper for me to send them UPS or FedEx, but there are instances that I do use these. So I will touch on them. I also just use a lot of normal priority. It seems to be cheaper than these since they've raised the rates on these. But again, it really just depends what you're selling. I sell a lot of lighter things. So I'm really not having the option come up to use these that often. Now, when you are selling a priority item, and if you have buyer pays shipping on priority, you have to send it priority or another one to three day service. I get this question a lot too, so I just wanted to address that. So if you are doing buyer pay shipping, maybe have them buy first class or buy parcel select, because if they buy those, you can send it whatever you darn well please. But if you send it priority, they're expecting to get it quick and you need to deliver on that. All right, first item here, the flat rate envelope. This I've actually seen used when I've bought some poly mailers, like smaller ones, they are heavy. So they send them in these and it's probably cheaper because you can cram quite a bit in these actually, surprisingly more than you think. But this one is going to run you $7.52 right now. Next, we have the legal flat rate envelope, which you might say, is that not the same exact thing? Yes, it looks very similar. It is just a little bigger. You can see I have the normal one in front of it. And that one is going to run you $7.81. Next, we have our small flat rate box, which honestly, I don't know that I've ever used this personally. It's just not that big and it costs more than these two and I feel like I can fit way more in these two. You can see you can maybe fit like a VHS tape in here. That's about it. And that's going to run you $8.01. Then this bad boy, I, I do use these quite a bit. It is a padded flat rate envelope. Don't let it confuse you. It says flat rate envelope, but it's padded. It's right now going to run you $8.20. I use this for a lot of hoodies and like heavier clothing items for that. If it's not cheaper to go parcel select or normal priority, then sometimes this comes in clutch. I use this probably once or twice every time I'm shipping. Next, we have our medium flat rate box here, but this is going to run you $13.83. If you're selling a lot of like heavy clothing, maybe, I don't know. I honestly, I don't use these flat rate boxes a ton, so I don't know what you would send in these. Then we've got our large flat rate box. That is going to run you $18. 
Uh, this is decent size, but again, I feel like I can send stuff UPS and FedEx cheaper. Now these flowery boxes can be quite clutch if you're sending it to a region pretty far from you. Like if I'm shipping from Ohio to California, something heavier, that's going to cost a decent amount going FedEx or UPS. So that can be where these flat rate boxes and the rates don't change. That can be where that comes in real clutch and where you're going to use these. Next, we got my buddies. Regional rate box A, regional rate box B. I actually use regional rate box A a decent amount. Now these are based on location and based on zones. I'll put that up on the screen. So basically if I'm sending something to Ohio, that's gonna be like zone one, and then the next state's out, Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, Michigan, all those types of states are probably going to be zone two. They might even be in zone one. I'm not sure the exact zones, but the closer it is to you, the cheaper it is going to be to ship. As you could see what the far out zones were, those are not cheap at all. So these two are really only best when you're shipping stuff close to home. Now if that many priority shipping options weren't enough for you let me throw one more little wrinkle into this i've been talking about this normal priority i'll just call it standard priority just to make it plain and simple this will just say usps priority mail on ebay when you're going to ship it if it's under five pounds and i'm not sending it parcel select or i'm not sending it first class i'm typically using standard priority mail it has decent rates and seems to be better than a lot of those. Again, I'm not selling bigger items. If you are, you're probably going to use those a lot more. They wouldn't even offer those as options anymore. And another thing that really confuses people because all of those have their own special box, there is no special box for priority. You can send priority in literally anything. You can send standard priority in this Fila box we talked about earlier. You can set it in this Target box we talked about earlier. You can even send it in these that we talked about earlier. Padded mailer, poly mailer. You can send priority in anything that you want except one of these flat rate boxes or regional box A, regional box B. If it has its own specific service, it has to go that service and do not try to send priority in it or they will ding your account. However, there are priority mailing boxes that you can use with standard priority. They even have bags. Look at this, it says mailing envelope on it. That means you can use it with priority because it doesn't have a specific service. This is another one, mailing box you can see. They have probably like five to 10 different sizes of this that you can get on the website and I'm going to show that in a little bit. These are all free. You can get all these flat rate boxes, all of these for free. Again, they've got different sizes of these. This is a priority mail shoe box. So you can easily put shoes in here. It's a really nice box. I use this one quite a bit. But again, do not use those flat rate boxes. Use one of these priority mailing boxes or just use the box that you have laying around. And dimensions and weight are going to matter on standard priority. So now I'm going to show you how to get these free boxes from the USPS website. All you have to do is go to Google, type in free USPS boxes, and then shipping supplies. You click on that and it will take you to all of these. You can see all these different ones. You've got the medium flat rate. Look, there's even more than what I explained, but I use this one a lot, the shoe box. Uh, that's perfect for shoes. I'm gonna ship a pair of shoes here in a few moments, um, but you can see here's the flat rate envelope, all these. Now, if you want something, you just will click on it and pick your pack, and you can order up to six of these times 15, add it to cart. It's pretty simple. You don't even actually need an account with them. You can actually check out as a guest. So pretty simple. You can get all different kinds of just standard priority mailing boxes as well as all of the legal flat rates. And you can even get priority stickers from this as well. All right, let's ship a couple things first. Obviously, all you have to do is click purchase shipping label on eBay. And we're going to ship this hat first. I have this Texas Rangers hat and it is unstructured. It sold for under $20 and it's going to be under four ounces. I'll show you here. I got this scale for 20 bucks on Amazon. I have the link down below as well. Look at that. Two ounces. We put the poly mailer with it. Pretty easy to weigh. First class stuff. It's going to be four ounces, so it's going to be under that first threshold. And we already have that in. Again, dimensions don't matter on first class. Easy enough. We just come down here and we hit purchase shipping label. Get that Rolo action. Bang. Easy as that. Next, let's ship some Crocs. These are size 12, so they're gonna be close. We're gonna have to see. They may be first class, they could be something else. I have them set at a pound. Let's check. Size 12, these are always close. 15.3, here's our poly mailer. Let's see what it is. Boom. We're gonna be good to go because the label doesn't really weigh anything. So that'll be first class, easy enough. And if it wasn't, honestly, I would just take it out of the bag and that would take some weight off of it. 
Easy enough. And yes, I sent Crocs in a polymailer. Watch some of my other videos. I sent a lot of stuff in polymailers that can't be broken. Crocs are rubber. Nothing's going to happen to them. And they're going to see way worse than this on the way. All right, now I sold these shoes right here, new in box. I'm going to show you how I would ship them new in the box and how I would ship shoes that I don't have boxes with because I have that as well. So these, I would literally just box up, take this poly mailer, slide these in the poly mailer, and be good to go. I mean, these are some lower end shoes. I sold them for like $70. They aren't expecting a ton and people that are wearing Saucony shoes or Saucony, I don't know how to say that, don't really care about the box. If you're selling like Jordans or Nikes, they probably care about the box. But when I'm selling these or Adidas or something, they're not caring about the box. They just want the shoes. So you just send this in a poly mailer and I would send that between parcel, priority, UPS, whatever the cheapest is. Now I'm going to show you what to do. If you just have the shoes, no box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh them and just a standard box that's about this size because I want to see if I want to send them priority, FedEx, UPS, parcel. If I'm sending them priority, I got this shoe box, mailing box that'll be nice, but I'm not going to package it up in this first because they may go to parcel and they may go in this. So we got two pounds which I guess I already had two pounds entered in. And I said to estimate the dimensions, but I really feel like this one's going to go parcel. So I'm just going to measure it right here. We got 13, always round up on your dimensions by 10, by six. Now we're going to explore all of our rates. We could literally send this anything. 796 is what it wants us to buy. That is priority mail. You can come down here and see all the flat rates and everything. You could technically squeeze those in like a padded flat rate, but I'm not wanting to do that on $70 shoes and it's not even cheaper. You can see all the flat rates are just slightly above normal priority and that's usually what it is with things like this. We can see FedEx down here. Obviously that's gonna be better for heavier items, so it's not great here. UPS is pretty darn close. UPS honestly has had really good rates lately because they didn't hike them up when everyone else did. So be on the lookout for UPS, especially maybe items like three to five pounds now should probably be cheaper if this is only a two pound item and it's not much more. But let's go all the way down. Look at that, partial select, 764. That's my guy right there. 764 versus 796. Parcel Select is going to save you money. So we will be good to go to just ship it alone in this box. But again, if it was priority, I was going to use this box. And if I was using the box that it came in, I'm just sliding that bad boy into a poly mailer. Another shipping service that I briefly want to mention, if you're planning on selling Pokemon or sports cards, any type of cards, you're going to want to learn how to use eBay standard envelope. I have an entire video I've made on this up here. I will just do a brief recap on this. Pretty plain and simple. All you have to do is if you're selling cards, you can see three ounces is going to be 93 cents. Two ounces is going to be 73 cents. And one ounce is going to be 53 cents. There's no reason for this card to not be one ounce. It's always going to be one ounce, one card in a top loader. I mean, it's not even close to an ounce. It's 0.3 of an ounce. And all you're going to do is take that and put it in this. Penny sleeve this, top load it, put some painter's tape across the top so the card can't slide out, put it in here, and select eBay standard envelope for 53 cents, and that's all you need to do. All right, and lastly, FedEx and UPS. I don't really have anything special to say. Kind of very similar to parcel select and priority. You put your weight and dimensions in, and you kind of just compare all of those. You compare standard priority, you compare parcel select, and then you look at all the UPS and FedEx options, and you kind of just pick whatever is cheapest. That's what I do. Because I do free shipping on most of my items. If I do charge shipping, then I will charge for, like I said earlier, parcel select or first class or UPS ground, and then I can send it whatever I want. So I don't really have anything special to say about UPS and FedEx. Usually anything like over five to 10 pounds is what I'm sending FedEx. When I was shipping all those pools last summer, I was sending everything FedEx and UPS because those were between like 30 and 140 pounds. So all of those were going UPS and FedEx. But even on like one to three pound items, always be checking these rates. You're going to put the dimensions and the weight in anyways. You might as well be checking all of the different rates because sometimes UPS and FedEx, depending on the region, are cheaper. These depend on where the item is going as well. So the rates are always changing. If an item is closer to you, these rates are going to be closer. So how exactly do I go about weighing and getting the dimensions on these items if I don't know exactly like what to do? This can be done in multiple ways and it's really up to your preference, whatever you prefer. Personally, if it's under a pound like this hat, you just weigh it up oh, 3.2 ounces. Good to go. First class, four ounce. If it's over a pound, I will usually like just weigh it and then kind of just estimate about what the box or the poly mailer that I'm going to have go with it. Add eight to 12 ounces for that. 
put the weight in, and I can see whatever box or poly mailer I'm putting it in, kind of just estimate that for the time being. So I can just get a rough weight and dimensions, and then I can look at all the services to see Am I really going to use that box or is a flat rate box cheaper? Is FedEx or UPS cheaper or am I sending it standard priority or parcel select? I know this can be very confusing because there's so many different services to use, but the easiest thing to do is just get your weight and dimensions in when you're shipping it. And then you can just look at all your different options and choose what's cheapest. Now, if I'm outsourcing, how do I know how much something is going to cost to ship? This is another great question and I have a great answer for you. Use the eBay shipping calculator. This is pretty easy. Just go to Google and type in eBay shipping calculator and it'll take you right to it. I'll drop a link to it down below as well. So just to make it even easier, this is a great place to estimate how much stuff is going to cost to ship. And it's what I used to use when I didn't really understand shipping rates and was learning about them because you'll learn the more that you ship in this game, the more confident you will be and what you can buy and what is going to cost to ship. Rarely am I ever shocked by a shipping rates anymore. I pretty much can estimate about the range that anything is going to cost to ship. And that's just from experience. The more you ship, the more comfortable you will be with it. So in the shipping calculator, say you go to the store and you get this book. This is actually a really heavy book. I know this is over a pound. It's probably like one and a half pounds. So I would just throw two pounds in the shipping calculator and then weight and dimensions. Let's say it's going to go in a poly mailer that's probably 12 by 10 by two. So we'll put that in and it will bring up all of the rates and you put your zip code in and then you can put another zip code that you're shipping it to. So what I've always done when I use this is I do from Ohio to a California zip code. This gives you a worst case scenario of how much it's going to cost to ship. The most it will possibly cost you to ship. So you can build that into your price or if you're not worrying about it, then just do buyer pays shipping. But again, this worst case scenario allows you to estimate what it's going to cost to ship to the farthest place. And stuff's not always going to sell that farthest place. You might sell something to your same state and you end up making even more profit on that item because you estimated to pay way more in shipping. So I always just used to build in that worst case scenario to make sure that I could still make profit at that worst case scenario. So that will pretty much do it guys. If you have any questions or anything, drop them down below. I hope I was very thorough in this video. I tried to explain things in as much detail as I thought was necessary, but if I didn't answer your questions, drop them down below. And if I get enough of these, I'll probably just make a video thoroughly explaining answers to all of these questions. Now, if you're interested in a reselling community group, I have one, it's called Bread and Butter. You can join first link in the description. It's $29.99 a month, less than a dollar a day, and we give in-store leads, online leads, mentoring, pretty much everything that you could need in reselling. We offer it. If you're not interested in it, no big deal. I appreciate you watching so far into this video. If you're not already following me on Instagram, you can do so at millennial underscore profit. You can also follow the cook group at bread and butter group. If you have any more questions or anything, shoot us a DM there as well. Don't let shipping scare you. So many people let shipping scare them from getting into e-commerce and it's really not that big a deal. It's just something that takes a little experience and I hope this video helps push you in the right direction. Just start selling items, start shipping items, and I promise you it will get so much easier and you'll really start to understand what you're doing. There's money to be made everywhere, guys. Let's go get it. Thank you for watching The Millennial Profit.